Hey guys, so today we're going to be taking a look at the Air Flight Pack 2. And we actually looked at the original Flight Pack a while back on the channel, and that was a really great, stylish, and versatile bag that worked well as a briefcase, shoulder bag, or backpack. And so I was really excited to see that Air had released an updated version of the Flight Pack with a little bit of an improved look and some additional features that the original didn't have. And so I've been using this for the past couple of weeks and so far I've really enjoyed testing the bag out. I love the new updated look and a lot of the features definitely help make this a little bit more well-rounded option than the original. So I wanna go ahead and thank the company for sending the bag for me to test out and let's just jump in and take a closer look at the Air Flight Pack 2. So starting out with the outside of the bag, I really like the overall aesthetic that the company has chosen to go with here. This really looks to me a lot like the Travel Pack 2, and I love the look that that bag has, so it's nice to see it in a more compact form here. And I think the style also looks very professional. It's gonna work well for day-to-day -day use or for taking into the office. And I really think the new slimmer look works a lot better than the wider shape that the original Flight Pack had. As far as the capacity of the bag is a little bit smaller than the original, that one came in at close to 24 liters. This one is around 21. So a little bit less space, but I haven't noticed any issues. I'm still able to carry everything that I would wanna take with me on my day to day or into the office. And I really like the streamlined and slimmer look that the smaller capacity comes with. I think the bag looks a lot better on my back when I'm using it as a backpack. It really hugs my back tightly. I feel like I'm able to move around very quickly. It's very slim and it's just gonna work well in a variety of environments. As far as the materials and build quality, very much the same as you've seen from all of Air's other bags. So a really nice ballistic nylon on the outside, really beefy YKK zippers with good water resistance. You see some aqua guards here on the front. Everything seems very well protected against the elements. A nice thing about the YKK zippers is that they now have the ability to lock. So you have that locking ability in the main area where you would have your laptop and in the front organizational compartment where you might have some of your more sensitive tech accessories. In addition to the water resistant materials and zippers, it's nice to see things like this zipper garage here on the front to just help add that little bit of peace of mind. So definitely feels like the bag is gonna hold up well over the longer term. All of Air's bags that I've used so far have been very, very tough. Continuing along the outside of the bag, you have handles on the top and side. And the handle on the top is very similar to the handles that you've seen from all of Air's bags in the past. So really nice, thick seatbelt like material, very comfortable to hold. I also like that the handle sits pretty flush against the bag to keep the look clean. On the side, however, the handle has been redesigned to be a little bit more comfortable when you're using it like a briefcase. So there's a nice padded handle here. It's very cushioned and soft to hold. You can open it up and there's actually two handles here so that if you wanna open the bag when you have this portion of the zipper open, you can easily reach in and grab whatever you need. So a nice upgrade here, especially if you're somebody who uses the bag like a briefcase a lot. One thing that I didn't like is how much the handles end up sticking out. I did like that the handles on the old bag and the handles on most of Air's bags are a little bit more flush, similar to the top handle. This one, when you're wearing the bag on your back, can tend to stick out a little bit more than I would like to see. So it would have been nice if there was some way to attach it or if the handles just laid flatter against the side of the bag. So a small nitpick, especially for the comfort that's offered by this new handle. On the other side of the bag, I was very happy to see that Air added an external water bottle pocket. This was something that was missing on the original version of this bag, and it's always so nice to have. It offers a nice amount of capacity. I'm using the same water bottle that you've seen in all my other daily bag videos. And the compartment offers a nice amount of expandability. And one of my favorite things with compartments such as these is the ability to zip it up when you're not using it to help the bag maintain a more streamlined look. Moving on to the straps and the back paneling, some interesting changes here. As far as the straps, they've been very comfortable to wear. I like the amount of padding that they have. They're nice and thick. They have a meshy material to help prevent moisture from building up. They also have a nice width considering the size of the bag. And I really like the contoured shape. This typically sits well on my shoulders and has made the bag very comfortable throughout my day when I'm wearing it with a lot of weight. The straps don't include a sternum strap and you also don't have the ability to add one, which I think is fine considering the size of the bag. And I also think it matches the aesthetics a little bit better. Moving on to the back paneling, however, I was very sad to see that Air removed the mesh padding that the original Flight Pack had. This is very different from most of their bags. They typically have a very well padded and ventilated back paneling. So this is just kind of a flat area here. It's not uncomfortable to wear, but if you're using it for a longer period of time, there's definitely gonna be some moisture buildup. And I don't really understand why they would have removed that because their back paneling is usually so well done. So I wish they would have just left the same padding that you'll typically see on their shoulder straps here on the back. While we're on the back, one nice feature here is this large sleeve that you have to place this on your suitcase if you're walking around the airport and you don't wanna wear this on your back. This is very easy to get through your suitcase handle. It's gonna offer a nice secure hold so that you can just roll your bag around together while you're walking around the airport. 
If you prefer to give the bag a more streamlined look when you're using this like a briefcase or a shoulder bag, you do have the ability to hide the straps and they are attached with these nice durable buckles here. I'm glad to see that they don't dig into my back while I'm wearing this like a backpack and they're very easy to remove. The process of tucking the straps away is very simple with this large compartment here at the top, making it very easy to convert from shoulder bag to backpack when you need to. With the straps tucked away, the bag has a very professional look, making it work very well with the new briefcase handle. And the bag also includes a removable shoulder belt that offers a nice amount of padding. Here you see the same meshy materials that you saw on the straps, so nice and thick, and the bag works very well like a shoulder bag. It offers a nice amount of width. You can adjust it on both sides, and it's very easy to attach to these plastic clips that they have on the side. And then I was happy to see that the strap offered enough length to easily use this as a shoulder bag or cross body if you prefer to carry it that way. And I really like just how nice the bag looks when you're carrying it in all three modes. I've seen a lot of bags with the side handle that are just kind of meant to carry that way, but it doesn't really look right. The bag just looks like a backpack that happens to have a side handle. So really well thought out look here. And so now that we've had a chance to walk through the bag in all three modes, that does kind of bring me to my biggest complaint with the bag. And that's just the fact that the way that all the compartments are oriented really makes this most usable as a backpack. As you'll see when we start walking through all the organizational areas, everything's kind of set up so that they're only easy to reach into and grab when the bag is being held up vertically, much like you would when you have it worn as a backpack. So if you're carrying the bag by the side, it's very hard to reach into any of the compartments and easily grab everything, or it seems like sometimes it might be easy for things to fall out. So it would have been interesting to see Air try to reorient some of the compartments to make them easier to use while you're carrying it sideways. For example, the laptop compartment is vertically oriented, and so if you're using it like a briefcase, there's no way to reach down and grab your laptop. Same with a shoulder bag, while bags like the Timbuktu Ace really reoriented everything so that you can easily grab stuff regardless of how you were using the bag. And for me, the pocket orientation isn't a huge deal because most of the time I'm really gonna end up using this like a backpack. But if you're somebody that was hoping to use this like a shoulder bag or a briefcase, that's definitely gonna be a little bit annoying to use. Jumping into the organizational options of the bag, there's definitely plenty of pockets all throughout. On the front, you just have a very simple quick access compartment similar to the one on the Travel Pack 2. As we mentioned earlier, nice, well-protected YKK zipper here. I like that the compartment has some pull tabs to make opening that area a little bit easier. And so, very simple compartment, no internal organization, no sort of felt lining on the inside. And so, plenty of space here for items that you need to get to quickly throughout your day. So currently what I have in here is just a lightning cable to charge my phone. And then I also just tossed in my GoPro Hero 3 Plus. So nice to see that the compartment comes up a nice amount so that you can put some of those bulkier items in there, especially if you don't have the other compartments of the bag too filled up. Next up is a larger admin panel with the lockable zippers that has a nice pretty wide opening so that you can easily see everything that's on the inside. Lots of small slip pockets here to keep all your smaller items organized. And I also like that this compartment is a little bit flexible to allow for both your items like my Beats Studio wireless headphones that you see here. Even with the headphones, I have a little bit of leftover space so there were some other items I'd wanna tuck in here. And so pulling the headphones out, the other items that I currently have here include my GORUCK wire dop, so that comes down all the way down to the bottom. So nice amount of depth here on the compartment as well. So pulling out my wire dop, this is where I have most of my dongles and cables and smaller accessories. And then on the bottom, there's two additional larger elastic slip pockets here that you can use for larger tech accessories, such as a laptop charger. They're also elevated off the bottom of the ground, so if you wanna put something like a point and shoot camera, it should be protected if you place your bag down. Moving up to the top, you have some smaller slip pockets. I like that they are also elastic to allow for some bulkier items. So here in this larger one, I have my Blue Pop portable Bluetooth speaker and power bank. And then next to that, you have a few slots for something like a pen or a stylus, which is what I have here. And then next to that, you have a smaller elastic compartment that has a little bit of mesh, it comes out a nice amount. So currently what I have in here is my Apple Magic Mouse. And then behind that, you have just another simple slip pocket. As with most of these compartments that are on top of each other, I typically don't end up using both as it's kind of hard because they share volume. Behind all the smaller slip pockets at the top, there is an additional zippered area, which is just a large, simple compartment. It goes down to about the length of my finger. So a nice amount of space here for holding those smaller items that you don't want loose in this main area. So currently what I have in here is just a simple fidget spinner. And then I also have a USB-C adapter for my Touch Bar MacBook. And this might be an area where I would throw something like my keys or if I was going through TSA, I might throw my phone and wallet in here. So I like to leave a little bit of leftover space here and it's nice that because you can zip this out, it will keep things from spilling out. 
And then the last thing I want to mention about this compartment, as I was talking about earlier, is the difficulty of using some of these areas while you're carrying the bag like a briefcase. So if you were holding this sideways, it might be a little bit difficult to reach down and grab something from these slip pockets. I'd also be a little bit concerned that if something was a little bit looser, it would slip out. So I wish that some of these had been oriented maybe a little bit more diagonally or even horizontally to just make it a little bit easier to reach them while holding the bag like a briefcase. At the top, as with many of Air's other bags, you have a great little quick access compartment that's very well protected and very easy to get to. You have a nice amount of space here. So currently what I have is just my Ray-Ban sunglasses with their case. I had some leftover room if I wanted to put a charger in there or a mouse or something. No sort of felt lining or anything on the inside, but it is nice that you can pull the pocket out if you need to clean it. The last area we're gonna be taking a look at is the main compartment. So releasing the lock that I had on the lockable zippers. Opening this up, it does have a fairly wide opening to make it pretty easy to see everything that's on the inside. It doesn't open quite flat, but on the side with the briefcase handle, the bag does have a little bit of a longer opening to make it easier to kind of reach in and try to grab stuff while you're holding it sideways. And so going through what I have here, the first thing is just a full-size moleskin notebook. Then I also have a simple folder for my papers and receipts. And then of course I have my Levitate portable standing desk. And so here you can get a look at the main area while it's empty. On the front, you have two additional slip pockets that have these Velcro closures here to help keep whatever you have in there secure. They have a nice amount of volume and space. So as you can see, I can easily fit my whole hand in there. So this might be a good spot to put something like a portable battery as well, or a hard drive or your laptop charger. So lots of different spots to kind of organize everything. On the other side of this compartment, you have a simple sleeve that might be good for holding something like a tablet. Currently what I have in here is just my Kindle e-reader. And the sleeve offers a nice amount of space. You can definitely fit up to a full-size tablet, maybe even the 12-inch iPad Pro. One thing to note about the sleeve is that it doesn't really offer any sort of protection or padding. It's just meant to provide some organization to make it easy to reach down and grab your device. But I definitely recommend using some sort of a case if you wanna have a little bit more peace of mind. And then the last area in the main compartment is a padded laptop sleeve that's meant to hold up to a 15 inch laptop. Currently what I have in here is my 13 inch MacBook Pro and as you can see that fits in there very easily. Plenty of leftover space for a taller device. I also like that the sleeve comes out a nice amount if you have a little bit of a thicker laptop, it's gonna be able to fit in there comfortably. The sleeve itself offers a nice amount of padding. It's a little bit flimsier than I would like to see but it still feels like it's gonna offer some protection for your device and so pulling the laptop out. Now with the compartment empty, you can get a little bit of a better look. Unfortunately, there's no felt lining on the inside. And one thing that I was sad to see is that the compartment isn't elevated off the bottom of the ground. It does have a little bit of padding to protect your laptop when you're placing it down, but it still would have been nice to see it actually be lifted off the bottom a little bit just to provide that extra bit of protection. But pretty good implementation overall. It still feels like your laptop is gonna be pretty well protected. And I really like the amount of space and organization that was offered in this main area and throughout the rest of the bag. And although this isn't really meant to be a travel bag, I have been experimenting with ways to travel a little bit more minimally and with smaller bags. And so I've been testing out these packing cubes from Knack. And a little while back, we actually reviewed the Knack Pack, which has been one of the better expandable and compressible backpacks that we featured on the channel. And one of the things that they also make is these very lightweight and durable packing cubes, which I've really enjoyed using. They offer a nice amount of capacity. They have a nice mesh on the top to allow you to see what's on the inside. But most importantly, like their backpack, they offer the ability to expand and compress to be able to fit a little bit of extra stuff. And so I filled this up with a few changes of clothes for a little bit of light travel. And so zipping these up, it actually allows me to pack everything down into a really slim form factor. So I wanted to see if I could use something like this for maybe something like a weekend trip. So just throwing in a couple of packing cubes and then throwing in my laptop, I should be able to close this up pretty comfortably. And so even with the two knack packing cubes on the inside, I still have leftover space here to toss in something like a jacket or a flatter pair of shoes. What I'll go ahead and throw in here is my air travel kit, which is my favorite top kit. And then I can close the bag up. And then with the amount of stuff that I currently have in here, I could easily travel for at least a weekend. So really deceptive amount of space in this 21 liter bag. And as you can see, it still maintains a really slim and clean look, making it a very versatile all around bag. And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience testing out the Flight Pack 2 over the past couple of weeks. It's been a great all around daily and work bag. I really love the look that it has. It has a nice build quality and I really like the organizational options and versatility that it offers considering that you can use it as a briefcase and a shoulder bag in addition to a backpack. And so you can purchase the Flight Pack 2 on Air site for about $160. And that's a little bit of an investment, but I think it's a pretty reasonable price considering the build quality and features that the bag has to offer. It also falls in line with a lot of the other solid daily and work bags that we've looked at in this category. 
And so as I was using this, the first bag that came to mind was the Air Day Pack, which is just a really stylish and capable EDC and work bag. It has a nice professional look. It's very comfortable. It has a lot of organizational options. And if you're looking for something with a similar quality to this, but you want to save a little bit of money, the Air Day Pack is also going to come in at about $125. So if you don't need the ability to wear as a shoulder bag or a briefcase, that's definitely an option I recommend you check out. The next bag that came to mind as I was testing this out was the Timbuk2 Ace, which has been one of the best convertible bags that we've looked at on the channel. It has a really solid build quality, a pretty nice look. And like this bag, you can use it as a shoulder bag, as a briefcase, or as a backpack. And in my opinion, that bag has kind of been the best at working well in all three modes. The way that the zippers and pockets are oriented make it a little bit better to use in shoulder or briefcase mode as opposed to this bag here. I don't think that bag can hold quite as much as the Flight Pack 2, and I don't like the look as much either, but if you just really want something that works really well in all the different modes and you want to save a little bit of money, the Timbuk2 Ace is going to be a great option to check out. It comes in at under $100, so if you're on a bit of a tighter budget, that's going to be a great option to keep in mind. Another good option to check out would be something like the standard Luggage Co. daily backpack that we looked at a while back. That's another great stylish work slash daily bag that converts into a shoulder bag or you can use in briefcase mode if you want a bag with a lot of versatility. That also has a lot of nice organizational options. I don't really like the look quite as much as this bag here and I don't think that the materials that were used there are going to be quite as weather resistant but that's just a really solid all around bag. It comes in at a pretty similar price range. I think it's about $120 so if you have a slightly tighter budget or you like the look of that bag a little bit more, definitely recommend you check out the video that we did for that in the past. The last option that I'll mention here is the Bailroy Classic Plus, which has been one of my favorite kind of all around EDC and work bags. It's very comfortable, super well built. I love the way the organization is laid out in that bag. It's gonna be a little bit more expensive than this bag coming in at closer to $200. But if you just want a really solid all around bag and you don't need something that works like a briefcase or a shoulder bag, the Bellroy Classic Plus may be worth the investment. But with all that being said, the Flight Pack 2 holds up great against all those bags. And if you're looking for something stylish, durable, and versatile for your day to day or for work, I definitely recommend you check this one out. And I'm curious to hear what you guys think of these sort of convertible bags. Do you typically use them like a briefcase, a shoulder bag, or do you always end up using them like a backpack? I know for me, I typically just default to backpack use but I'm curious to hear how much you guys switch between the different modes. And as always, if you guys have any suggestions for cool bags such as this that you'd like me to feature on the channel, please let me know in the comments. And I wanna go ahead and thank the company for sending the bag for me to test out. And if you guys found this video useful, please go ahead and give us a like. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And thank you guys so much.